uh, we've been working really hard on Angular 2 for a number of years, and we actually started we started reading that actually 10 years ago. Uh, this is our 10 year anniversary this year, and it's the fifth year anniversary of the Guild Wars 1 franchise. And when we originally founded React, we founded it to innovate. And that's exactly what we feel like we did with Guild Wars 1. We had, for the first game of a startup studio, we feel like we had an unprecedented success. Over, we have sold over 6 million units worldwide. And in Europe, over half of our units were in Europe. Germany was at the core of it. And from our perspective, there's no better place in the world for us to be unveiling a hands-on demo of Guild Wars 2 from New York Gamescom. Right, so it seems like we're right into our first dynamic event, which is fighting the Chatera, which is one of our main mobs, uh, our main boss monsters in this game. Izzy, let's do some sports commentary here, you are my sidekick, so tell us a little bit more about the combat. Alright, well we're starting off here with a Char Warrior, um, and he's building two axes. Um, one of the cool abilities that the uh, uh, double axes can do is called whirling axe, skill 5 here, and uh, allows you to scroll into a straight line and do a lot of auto damage all the way down. It's kind of one of the things that we've been really trying to push with the new combat system is positional combat. It allows you to move around the field and move forward and backwards and uh, change your position around the field in all sorts of different ways. It's one of the things that we uh, really want to push and play, not only in um, PvE, but all throughout the game. And as you clearly see, like we talked about, our combat is very visually striking as well. You get like visual feedback on everything you do. It's not just numbers popping up. You see people burning, you see conditions on people. Um, hey guys, can you show us some weapon swapping? Weapon swapping, which is one of the elemental parts of our new game. Easy, tell us a little bit about weapon swapping and how this affects the gameplay. So we really wanted you to be able to change out your, weapon, your, your skills on the fly and uh, each weapon brings a unique play style to the field. So the warrior here just swapped out to a rifle which will allow him to have ranged combat and do a large amount of damage to a single enemy. So he can charge up a powerful blast and weaken his enemy or he can unleash a barrage of attacks towards a, a single target. And this, this combo allows him to go back and forth between switching with axes or swap out to his rifle and do a lot of damage to a target at range. We really want the warrior to feel like he's an arms master and have all sorts of different weapons at his disposal and he can switch out between them at different times when it's when an opportunity for him in combat. Well, by the way, if you just saw this nice tornado that just went past us, there was actually a player, there's a spell that an elementalist can cast, which transforms the player into the actual tornado. Um, another cool thing we do is we have cross, cross professions weapons combination. Guys, can we show a cross profession combo? As you can see, our elementalist just put a firewall in there, and our warrior can actually use whirling axe to just go straight through this wall, which just turned out. And is they're basically shooting fireballs at the opponents while going through this blank wall. So one of the big things that we like about cross-profession combos is, as you can see there, we uh, missed the first one, is it, it encourages some coordination between your other players. you got to put the firewall down and roll through it, and it takes a little bit of timing and play and interaction between uh, your allies. And uh, the, the combo that they're trying to put together is you put a firewall down and you roll through it, and you'll shoot fire balls in all the directions. And uh, it allows you to do basically a lot of AOE damage in kind of a different way than you normally were be able to before. Uh, other types of uh, skills that we use in order to encourage some positional combat, that's a uh, skill we call Fire Prism. It's a uh, circle fire that you can put around the target. You can then knock them through the fire, or you can put it on a target that's moving, and that'll cause it to move through the fire and do lots and lots of damage. Just different ways that we get uh, the combat to be more fluid in movement and allow you to kind of find those uh, moments in combat you can take advantage of. One of the things in, in MMOs normally what really sucks is if you die, right? 
because you die and then you have to rest somewhere. Um, we have a couple of different things that we do. For example, every player can rest other players and you don't even need the skill for it. You can just like help them up. You can even work on some of the NPCs. The other thing is if you help, I don't know if we can demonstrate this because our drivers are so awesome and they hardly die. But um, if one of them would die, we could probably demonstrate our down state, which means if you lose all your health, you don't die immediately. You get into a state that is that we call the down state. Is it? Tell a little bit more about that. Uh, well, as you can see right there, uh, the Char Warrior rezzed our Elementalist friend. And uh, there was no skill they had to have on his bar. You could just walk right up to his uh, down friend and resurrect him. And it's kind of the philosophy that we want is that it's just really easy to help your allies and help them get back up into the fight and fighting and back to having fun take part in this event will be asked, hey, which opponent do you want to fight next? So everybody cast their vote, and the one thing that gets the most votes, this, this will be the next opponent that the players will fight. As we see, they are rushing in, and they decided to fight against Brandon Hilton. So the Branded Army is uh, part of one of the big dragons that's corrupted the area. And we saw the big lieutenant dragon that has been breathing, coming down in the area. And these are also some of the smaller minions. They are all sorts of different creatures that you see around the area that have been corrupted and turned uh, more evil. Go, Venus Schnitzel.